Unfortunately today, we still have some difficulties with diagnosis and treatment as well. And although uh, about two years ago, TFOS released uh, the current guideline, we are still experiencing significant difference uh, between countries for diagnosis of dry eyes. And those difficulties are of course reflecting in the treatment. And we have to consider that dry eye is a multifactorial disease and basically ophthalmologists being uh, intervening uh, in, with their diagnostic methods, they also uh, create some problems and that includes surgical cases as well. So another very significant challenge would be the treatment because we have a four-step strategy for treatment today. And the first step is uh, basically just lubrication and hygiene. The second step already includes medications like uh, corticosteroids and cyclosporin. The third step is a little bit more advanced and that includes already serum drops. And the fourth step is already surgical approaches. Uh, and we have knowledge about those, but the main problem is that we do not have personalized treatment. Because every patient is different, every patient has uh, a specific environmental conditions, every patient requires uh, specific uh, uh, couching and specific guiding. And this is another unmet need, because those patients do not only require prescription, they actually require somebody who is walking through this difficult uh, walk with them and managing their dry eye. Cataract surgery uh, is the most performed surgery today and unfortunately we are not only operating on cataract surgical patients uh, who are having dry eye, but cataract surgery itself creates dry eye. And there are many steps in the preparation starting uh, with uh, using drops for anesthesia and followed by um, evaluations which are taking quite a lot of time and also during the surgical steps uh, for example speculum uh, speculum is something which is really important because it may damage meibomium glands and therefore it may cause dry eye and all those steps we should consider very carefully so uh, I'm not also prescribing the medications for managing dry eye for my patients and like lubricating drops for every patient for at least three months after the cataract surgery but I also very carefully consider each step of my surgery in order to prevent dry eye. For example, I do not use wire speculum at all because speculums with blade are actually re less traumatic to the meibomium glands. At the end of surgery, I always put the remnants of the viscoelastic on the ocular surface in order to lubricate the eye during those two hours when the eye is usually closed. And some other tricks and tips that of course are helping to my patients. But very importantly, we should inform the patients that cataract surgery may be associated or may cause exacerbation of the dry eye. And therefore, those patients being aware should take proper measure for their dry eye. The key areas today are probably in three different pillars. The first thing is diagnostic, because we still do not have a gold standard for diagnostics. And there are lots of uh, uh, small equipment pieces and lots of uh, big machines that we can use, but unfortunately we do not have a single value that we say, okay, this is the cutoff point and from there on we have dry eye or not. Osmolarity is probably one of the key words, but still osmolarity is not widely accessible. So the research is directed to methods that can be widely used in the field because dry eye is so massive problem. Another key area for research uh, is actually the treatment. And we are still not sure what exactly lubricating drops are best for uh, particular patients. We know that some substances, for example, hyaluronic acid, is better than other substances uh, when they are um, uh, in the content of uh, lubricating drops. 
But unfortunately, uh, we still do not have the ideal drop and therefore on the market you see a variety of different products. Another very interesting area of research is actually epidemiology of the dry eye. Because we know that dry eye is widely, uh, uh, wide disease, unfortunately uh, dry eye today uh, varies between countries, varies between climates. And for example, my area of research is how the UV affects dry eye. So this is probably something which in the near future we need to pay a little bit more attention, especially considering the climate changes, because dry eye is a very relevant problem when we have changes of the climate. The treatment probably will be more personalized, uh, which means that probably we are going to have drops that are prepared for a particular type of patients or even for a particular patient. It depends very much on the severity of the dry eye, so the more severe dry eye will require more personalized approach. And of course, the less severe dry eye may be managed with conventional methods. So uh, I do believe that uh, using those treatments we are uh, going to be able to decrease the frequency of the disease. Of course uh, we cannot eradicate it because this is going to be a problem especially considering the new gadgets that are coming on the market and all those technologies where we are going to use virtual reality, where we are going to use electronic projections, maybe something like Google Glasses, even Google contact lenses. And this is something very important. In the future, it's very likely that we are going to intervene on the ocular surface more and more. And therefore, we need to prevent before intervene. And those patients, which are at the stage probably not patients, but people that are going to use those gadgets, they need to understand that they have to do a prophylactic lubrication of the ocular surface before, for example, apply a Google Lens.